Hey, welcome back to 65 Drums. My name's Justin. Today I'm doing my review of the Gava G5 Studio 5. This is a bit of a 180 from the previous Gava drum set that I reviewed, which was over twice as expensive. I wanted to go and review something from them that was a lot cheaper, while keeping the exact same sound set and the exact same cymbals as the flagship. There's been a few new updates at Gava since I last made a video about them. They have a brand new flagship drum set, which I'm not going to review yet, so that's uh, maybe for a later day. And they also have done some major updates to the Gava G5 module and the Gava G9 module. I'm going to be doing a separate video just comparing the G5 versus the G9, and I'll probably talk more about that in that video later on. So we're going to start off with the specs of the drum set, the specs of the module, then talk about the pros and cons of everything, and then finally whether or not it's worth buying. So here are the sizes of the drums. You got a 12 inch snare, toms are 10, 10 and 12 inches across. You can either have it as a two up, one down configuration, or you can have it as a one up, two down configuration like I've done right here. For the cymbals, you get two 14 inch crash cymbals, which are three zone. You get a three zone ride cymbal, which is 18 inches across, and you get a two piece 14 inch set of hi-hats. Now moving over to the drum module, it has room for about 11 drums and cymbals to be plugged in on the back. You'll see most official websites say that it can handle 12 components, but that's because they're counting the hi-hat open and close mechanism. And that 13th port is for a foot switch. Now for outputs, it has two master right and left outputs that are quarter inch, along with four direct outputs as well on top of that. This module also can do audio over USB, and I guess the headphone jack is also an output as well. Now as far as MIDI, you can do MIDI over USB, you can do MIDI over Bluetooth, and of course there's the in and out five pin MIDI connections as well. You can connect your phone via Bluetooth, and you can also connect your phone via the aux input. Now, as far as sounds, it has the exact same sound set as their flagship G9 module. And with the new update, that means it has 109 sounds, 40 kits, and 128 blank slots. That's so you can create your own custom user kits. There's also 128 empty slots for importing your own samples as well. Okay, so that's it for the module for right now. We'll get back to it and talk more about what it's capable of a little bit later on in the video. But first, I wanna talk about the drums and the cymbals. What are the pros and cons with these and are they any good? Okay, so the Studio 5 drum set is a pad-based system. That's why it's their lowest price drum set in their lineup. And I know lowest price with air quotation marks, 3,150 bucks is still expensive, but compared to their other drum sets, this is much less expensive while having the exact same cymbals and the exact same sound set. When I was unboxing these drum pads, they really remind me of the Roland PDX 100 line where it kind of bows in the middle into like this bowl shape, it just has a similar overall vibe. This is a regular standard two ply mesh head. Although I don't really think they're working with Remo anymore because that branding is just gone. I don't see it anywhere on these drums. You'll see that it's a trigger basket design that sits on the rim of the drum. The center cone is for the drum head area. And of course there's another piezo somewhere underneath everything for the rim zone. But if I had to be nitpicky here, these are tough, tough pieces of rubber. The rim zone on the snare is too narrow. So when I go and try to do rim shots with both hands, most of the time one hand will hit the rubber rim and the other hand will hit the metal rim. But of course, just so you know, you can buy third-party rubber rims, a bunch of different companies like Pintech, UFO Drums, and other places in Europe. There's a bunch of different options out there. Okay, so now let's move ahead to the kick drum. This is very, very interesting. I've never used an electronic kick drum just like this because it's got this big bib that goes underneath your kick drum pedal, and it's got Velcro all along the bottom of it. It is surprisingly effective at how sturdy it keeps your kick drum. It is not moving anywhere. It's got kind of a meaty sound to it. It also comes with a free kick drum patch in the box, so you don't have to go on Amazon and spend five bucks to get one of those. It increases the longevity of the drum head, especially if you use wood beaters or felt beaters. Now, when you remove that mesh head, it's a little bit surprising what's underneath. There is a piece of cloth, and then there's a piece of foam that's like a really big fat donut that gives a lot of stability to your playing. And then in the center, you have basically a piezo with a long foam rod on it. 
And then there's like this sort of circular basket sort of thing that's holding everything together. Also make sure you put it exactly back together correctly, otherwise the logo on the back of the kick drum will be crooked. Now if you end up liking the concept of this drum set, but you don't like the overall pad design, you can buy the exact same module and cymbals, but with wooden shells. It's called the Gava G5 Pro, and it costs around a thousand bucks more than this one. Now let's move forward to the cymbals. Here are the pros and cons I've noticed while playing them, starting off with the good stuff first. I like the fact that all these cymbals are a triple zone. Even the hi-hats have a bell zone on them. Just an FYI though, on the crashes, they do have a bell zone that is connected, but there isn't always a bell sound assigned to that bell zone. I also appreciate the fact that all these cymbals have 360 triggering on them. It doesn't matter where you play on them or if they spin halfway around, you can still play and they still have rotation stoppers on them, which is important because you don't want to have a cable spinning round around a cymbal just because it's 360, like ATV does, that adds stress to the cable. So a cymbal rotation stopper, no matter what design, is kind of a must in my opinion. My favorite cymbal out of the bunch is probably the hi-hats. It has a bottom plastic piece that acts as the bottom cymbal, and that adds some stability and a weighty, meaty feel when playing on this. I like the fact that the ride cymbal has a massive bell zone that's nearly impossible to miss. With my aim, I need every advantage I can get. And then finally, I really like the fact that I can get all three zones working with one cable or two, depending on the kind of module you throw at it. Now moving ahead to some of the negatives, while the hot spotting on the ride symbol has been drastically improved since my last review, uh, they still haven't fixed it on the crashes or the hi-hats. Remember when I said the hi-hats and crashes have bell zones? Well, that's true, but they are very picky on where you have to hit the bell in order to trigger the sound. After playing around with these for a while and being confused as to what was going on, I eventually figured out that you only have a 100% success rate when you play near the bottom of the bell. And speaking of which, over on the ride symbol, you'll notice that when you play on the bow area, if you play really hard, you'll actually trigger an edge sound or a bell sound for some unknown reason. Now I thought that maybe if I raise the threshold of the bell zone, that would make it stop triggering a bell sound when I'm just playing on a certain part of the bow area. But unfortunately, that didn't fix it. This problem also happens on the hi-hats, but you barely notice it. And then finally, doing simple swells is just a bad experience here. They don't sound right. So my thoughts on these symbols are complicated. On paper, these are darn near perfect, but in practice, they still need to be improved. Whether or not that's on the hardware side of things or the software side of things, these symbols still need a little bit of work. Now, don't get me wrong, I would still take these symbols over what the Elisa Strike Pro SE has, but these still can't compete yet with F-Note, ATV, Yamaha, or Roland just yet. Okay, so now let's talk about the hardware. First of all, it does come with a free hi-hat stand in the box, which is great to have. Most companies, they just don't include that. In the United States, you get a drum rack. It's a four post design that's pretty basic. And the only thing that I really like about it is that the cymbals are all boom arms, so you can easily position everything. This is a very basic drum rack on a $3,000 drum set. It really should be a little bit nicer. The drum rack tubing should curve around, so that would make it a whole lot more nice and convenient. I have to really crank down on all these plastic bits that hold the steel tubing together to make sure it doesn't tilt or anything. I was afraid I was going to break this thing. Eventually, I decided not to have the snare on the drum rack because it kept tilting sideways. I decided to just use one of my snare drum stands. The way the drum module's mounted is kind of interesting. It's basically this U-shaped piece of metal that connects to the drum module and then connects to the drum rack. And when you loosen it down, you can tilt it forward and backward. And then of course, it's on a rod that you can spin around. That gives you 360 degrees of movement.
Now, one last thing I wanna mention before we jump ahead to the pros and cons of the drum module itself is the wiring system and the overall cable management that comes with this. So what you do is you put all your cables in the sleeve and then whenever a cable needs to go to a tom or a cymbal, you just make it go through the piece of Velcro while keeping everything really nice and tidy. It seems kind of like an out of the box sort of odd way of going about it at first, but to be honest, it looks pretty clean and it works really well. Everything is numbered, not labeled. So you don't see cables being snare, kick, toms, cymbals. Instead, it's one, two, three, four, five. One thing that really confused me about these cables is that two of them were mislabeled. It came something like one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, 11, 12, something like that. It had a couple of cables that went to empty aux inputs that weren't even being used by a pad. And then it was missing a couple of inputs in the middle. Eventually, I just realized it was mislabeled and there was the correct number of cables that came with the drum set. I would much rather have labels for the kicks, snare, toms, and cymbals instead of a number system. Because when I'm sort of plugging in a pad, I'll, I'll be like, wait, is the tom going to be number five or is it number four? I'd have to go run back and forth over and over again. It'd be more convenient if it was actually labeled the name of the component. So the Gave a G5 module is kind of interesting. First of all, it's very similar to its flagship brother, which I'll make a, a versus video on a little bit later on, in the fact that it has the exact same sounds and the exact same trigger engine. They do have to dumb it down in other ways in order to get the price tag cut in half, like with the inputs and outputs and other things like that. And of course, it doesn't have the touchscreen. When you first set this up, there will be like a hi-hat setting adjustment that you do out of the box. And of course, it tells you what kind of pads you have. Do you have the Pro or do you have uh, the Studio version? So that sort of tricks you into thinking that you're all ready to go and everything is perfectly set up out of the box. But that's not really the case. Here's what I had to do to get this really working well. Number one, the kick drum is a little bit quiet out of the box. The next thing I had to fix is crosstalk between the cymbals and the toms. Those vibrations transfer between the different components and the module isn't smart enough to figure out what's a soft hit and what's a crosstalk vibration without you telling it. Now, something interesting about this drum module is that apparently it's supposed to work with all kinds of drum pads from all kinds of different companies. Now, let's just say that I choose the ride cymbal. You press on that and then you press again. Now you can see all the symbols that you can assign. These are trigger presets. So the Roland CY8, the, the 12, the 16, you got the Yamaha setups over here, you got the Alesis stuff, and you got ATV uh, presets as well. That's very impressive. I also like the home screen right here. You can adjust your BPM of your metronome right there and then go fine tune things. There's also a visual indicator so you can see if you're on beats, change the interval, the time signature, the click volume. You can also adjust whether or not the metronome goes to your headphones and the master outs or adjust your headphones. I cannot stress how important this is. If we go over here to effects, you can see that you got ambient effects, you got instrument reverb, you got room reverb and multi effects. It's also really easy to adjust things without going through the deep settings. So for ambience, I can turn it on or off and I got the level right here. I don't have to actually enter the menu unless I want to do fine tuning stuff. Instrument reverb, same thing, turn it on or off, and then I got the level, or I can go and really mess with the fine tune individual settings right here. Now in the home menu, you can either go through each kit one at a time by pressing here or pressing right here. But if you're in a hurry, you can press kit and you can cycle through it like that. Now over here on F2, you can adjust it as a rim shot or a cross stick or an X fade. Separate compression and EQ for master and headphone is awesome. By pressing the mixing button, this is where you can adjust the volume of everything or the panning of something all on one screen, that's great. We have five different volume controls just of the hi-hat, which is super convenient. I wish all modules did that. Over here, if you want, you can plug in a foot switch and have it do whatever you want. So for example, let's say that I wanna have the foot switch change kits, or I can have the foot switch turn off the virtual hi-hat clutch, uh, song player, set list, click, uh, you know, all that sort of stuff. Very, very useful. Inside of instrument, you can actually choose an instrument and layer a second sound, as you can see in this menu right here. Okay, so now I have to talk about something that's a little bit unfortunate, a really big headache that I finally just got over and I want to warn you about. So when I first got the Gava G5, Gava asked me to do an update to both drum modules. The update is a little bit under two gigabytes and you can put it on the included thumb drive. So I got two of them, one for each drum module. It's actually a two part update, by the way. So you download this zip file, you unzip it, and there's one update just for like the interface and maybe the trigger engine. The second update is for the sounds. So anyway, I do the update. At first, everything seemed fine, but there was an issue. When I played four individual kits out of the 40, there was a large white noise on the kick drum.
So I contacted GEVA USA. They had never heard of this problem, so they contacted GEVA Germany. And Germany actually had heard of this problem, and they had a fix. It turns out those sounds had been corrupted somehow. So they recommended that I do a fresh download from the website and then do an update with those freshly downloaded files. And that fixed it. If they had mentioned in their update video, hey, after doing the update, if you have some white noise on some of the sounds, that means there's a corruption problem. Just do the whole process all over again. If they'd mentioned that as like an offhand remark, that would make it a little bit, you know, a little bit easier to do all this. Instead, I had to email them and wait for a reply. Also, they need a little bit better quality control on their thumb drives because one of these was corrupted and I had to use this thumb drive instead of this one. Also, they need to make sure the transfer speeds on these are a little bit faster. It's only eight megabytes per second. Okay, so let's bring this home and talk about this drum module as a whole. Is this a good drum module? What it really excels at is an intuitive interface. Once you figure out what they're doing, it, everything makes sense when you finally find the settings you're looking for. The inputs and outputs are definitely above average. It's got four direct outs and two master outs. It's got individual inputs, plenty of inputs. The editing is also really good. A separate EQ and compression from the master outputs and the headphone outputs. Uh, it also has the ability to route the click, whether or not you wanna go out of the masters or just to the headphones, stuff like that. And then inside of effects, I like the, the, the ability to control the ambience, the instrument reverb, the room reverb, and multi-effects. These are all signs that the module has some thought behind it. I feel like the only two areas where this drum module lags behind the competition is overall the way the sounds are mixed and the way it triggers out of the box. When it comes to just plugging this into pads for the first time and starting to play right away, I feel like you know it's lagging behind how intuitive and how perfect it is when you play on some of the Japanese brands. But I have seen Geva making up ground and trying to improve their trigger models. And this does work with third party drums and cymbals. So that does give it a little bit of an advantage there. And of course, the second thing is more of a personal taste thing. I don't love the way a bunch of these sounds are mixed. They're kind of harsh and in your face in a way that I don't really like. But again, that's a personal taste thing listen to the playing examples, go watch some drum tech videos, and see if you like the way these sound compared to the competition. So overall, I feel like the bones of a truly great module are here, but as of right now, with this firmware that I'm on, it's a solid good drum module, but not a truly great drum module. Now let's take a step back and talk about whether or not it's worth buying and how it stacks up against the competition around this price range. So as a complete package, this is a good drum set. If you sit down and you spend enough time with the module to dial in a sound that you like, you will have a good time. There's a lot of flexibility here and the triggering is a lot better than it used to be. But I have played the competition around this price range. And so when trying to think of what this drum set necessarily does better than anybody, I can't really think of a giant standout feature that this should be well known for. It's kind of just average at most categories. So here's what I mean. The competition around this price is the Elisa Strike Pro SE and the F Note 3X at $2,700. The Yamaha DTX 8K Mesh at $2,800 the Roland VAD 306 at 2,900, the ATV A Drums Bass Edition with the XD3 module at about $3,000, the F Note 5X at $3,500, and then finally the Roland TD27 KV at $3,600. And here's what stands out to me when comparing them against the Geva G5 Studio 5. Geva has essentially created an all-rounder. It's not the biggest drum set at this price, but it's not the smallest drum set at this price. It doesn't have the most components at this price, uh, but it doesn't have the least components at this price. Gavo doesn't have the best drum module at this price, but it definitely does not have the worst drum module at this price. Gavo doesn't give you the most components at this price, but it doesn't give you the least amount of components at this price either. I feel like the best thing Gavo could do is lower the price a little bit. If this was closer to like the Yamaha DTX 8K price at $2,800 or even slightly below that, that would get more eyeballs on this drum set and more interest. The days of a plastic shell drum set around $3,000, that day is very much coming to a close. At this moment, the only company in the entire industry that can get away with it is probably Roland. Everybody else has to move to half shells, if not full shells, when you get to this sort of price. And that's the video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I really, really appreciate it. 
As a quick legal disclaimer, I was given this as like a 30 day loan uh, review unit from Geva. I am not being paid to make this video. These are my own opinions. If you want to support the channel more directly, there's a link to Patreon down in the description that helps you get your name at the end of these videos. Have an awesome day. See you in a few.